Um, good morning to everyone and uh, um, many thanks well, to I'm, the... Cristiano, I'm not sure if you have uh, slides, but we can't see them. No, no, no. I don't have any, uh, any presentation. Oh, okay. That's totally fine. In that case, carry on. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, thanks to the organizer and uh, the whole committee to accept uh, my paper about free will and algorithm. Um, for more than 50 years now, we have been witnessing remarkable developments in the field of what in 1956 was called artificial intelligence. Uh, the advent of AI has also been an extraordinary revolution for philosophy, especially uh, from an epistemological point of view, since it has prompted philosophers, and especially philosophers of mind, to shift the center of gravity of their interest from conceptual, purely philosophical analysis to the study of the human being, including his brain, as an animal, among other products of biological evolution. Most remarkably, uh, the last two decades have seen the re realization that artificial intelligence is an extraordinary opportunity and a formidable perspective lens for rethinking anthropology. It is my intention in this my presentation to see the intrinsic affinities of the relationship between free will and artificial intelligence in order to try to understand whether the irreproducibility in machines of freedom can also be followed by its irredu irreducibility. In particular, I will try to show how the cognitive capacity that is called free will is, um, is a typical algorithm because it is irreproducible in the machine and therefore is an element that can be defined as a elementum constitutivum, constitutive elements of the human being. The first point, the similarities between free will and AI can be traced as far back as the de definition. For both notion, in fact, there is considerable difficulty in providing a correct an exhaustive definition that is unanimously agreed upon. I like to resort to a very incisive expression used in an interview by Luciano Floridi. Um, says Floridi, friendship, AI, and many other things in life are like pornography. They are not definable in the strict sense in which water is definable and defined as H2O, but we recognize them when we encounter them. In this list of indefinable things, I believe that freedom can also be included, which is complex to characterize unambiguously, but nevertheless we recognize it when we see it, or rather when we experience it. To be fair, it should be pointed out that it is not correct to say that AI cannot be defined by listing necessary and suffici sufficient condition, but rather that there is no common agreement as to what ne the necessary and sufficient condition for AI are to arise, just as there is no agreement whatsoever as to what the necessary and sufficient condition for freedom are to arise. A second affinity between artificial intelligence and free will is given by the fact that in both cases, a du dualist ontology, however problematic, would seem to be the best context in which to situate both self-determination self and strong AI. In this case of artificial intelligence, in fact, materialism is anything but fundamental to the artificial general intelligence project. Since for a materialist, what counts is physics, the stuff of which something is made. For the proponents of strong AI, on the other hand, paradoxically, as it may seem, the basic structure cannot and should not constitute a disagreement, 
what really counts is only functionality. A third aspect, which instead brings out a dissimilarity, is constituted by the notion of omission. Omission is not contemplated for machine. Indeed, it is commonly assumed that the distinction between human being and a machine is the unpredictability of the former and the regularity of the latter. The human being, on the other hand, has always been granted room for maneuver in which he can act with freedom and with creativity. The human being is given to act or not to act at all. Therefore, uh, also to make an omission. I think uh, this may be a relevant element. For an engineer, in fact, if the machine being is in a certain state, does not choose. It does not move on the next state. And this means that machine mechanism has crashed. The human being, on the other hand, can make an omission without there be returning a pathological malfunction. Conversely, an aspect inherent to freedom that has always led to humans being equated with automatons is related to determinism. The notion of determinism is fundamental to AI since an algorithm is defined as a procedure that solves a given problem through a finite number of elementary, clear, and unambiguous steps. It is no coincidence that any computer could be taken as a perfect model of both Laplace ideal and Democritus ideal. Even if time were turned backwards, the computer would always act in exactly the same way, always taking exactly the same number of steps to solve the problem. A comprehensive description of how determinism is binding for humans and machines is provided by Ted Onderick. Determinism is only a view of our nature in essence, the view that ordinary, ordinary causation is true of us and our lives, that in our choosing and deciding we are subject to causal law. In this use of the word, determinism comes to no more than a yes answer to the question of whether we are in one fundamental way like plants or machines. Determinism in this sense does not include or imply an answer to the question of whether we are free or not. The question, maybe surprisingly, is left pretty well untouched. Laplace's genius is also useful to recall another anal analogy between AI and freedom that revolves around the concept of predictability. The, Laplace, uh, the Laplacian dream, in fact, may seem closer today than it once did, thanks to the highly efficient predictive capacity of AI, a field in which machines uh, far surpass humans and which is always growing ex exponentially. We live in a world so full of data that predictive capacity is almost indispensable, even in the context of scientific research. We must ask ourselves, what would our action be like if a machine provided us with the ugly, probable predication of future reality? Here again, the picture is not futuristic, but perfectly concrete, since several algorithms today have a predictive capacity based on a very high computation, computing power that is so far superior to that of the human being. The ethical and the social implication when faced with this scenario in which a mas machine can perfectly predict a person's growth, his develop developments, his action, are particularly significant. Nevertheless, it is precisely this astonishing predictive capacities of AIs that seems to collide with any theory exposed 
in reference to freedom. It not only the most beat, beaten down one's compatibilism or libertarianism, but also the more abstruse ones, such as fatalism or theological determinism. Nevertheless, it is possible to renounce the ideal of predicat predicatability and safeguard determinism at the same time. In the second scenario, in fact, if one did not claim to defend free will, but only a form of compatibilist freedom, it would be conceivable to understand this compatibilist freedom as a reproducible freedom. Immanuel Kant had already exposed this issue. If a human being action in so far as they belong to his determination in time were not merely determination of him as a parents, but as a thing in itself, freedom could not be saved. A human being would be a marionette or, ne, or an automatism like Vapoisson, built and wood up by the supreme artist. Self-consciousness would indeed make him a thinking automaton, but the consciousness of his own spontaneity, if taken for freedom, would be mere delusion in as much as it deserved to be called freedom only compartment because the proximate determining causes of its motion and the long series of their determining causes are indeed internal, but the last and digest is found entirely in the alien end. Embracing a purely mechanical freedom would, in fact, be tantamount to being nothing but robojigs, creatures who are somehow disposed to cast away the very essence of the humanity and embrace a personal identities as automatons. Entities of this kind, however, will not be machines that make free decision, but only machines that operate automatic decision or with a more exact wording, automatism. This kind of action, I believe, already exists. It is now well known that AI algorithms incorporate unprocessed information, raw data, which can then be analyzed and on the basis of which artificial intelligence will be able, will be able to develop their own implicit knowledge. In the light of that data and accumulated experience, the machines act through a process that is referred to in psychology as an automatic process. This process, however, is not similar to what we call writing, but the rather is similar, if not identical, to what happens when, uh, while we are driving, we see a child, a child draw walking and break. In such case, we do not proceed to a perfectly conscious, rational reasoning, but make the choice solely on the basis of our experience and break. If the freedom we want to reproduce is a mechanical freedom, I think it is only a matter of time. We only need to know perfectly how the brain works to have its counterpart on a silicon basis even if we want to support the reproducibility of this modest form of freedom, to quote Alfred Mele, a corollary, a corollary of it poses additional problems. Compatibilist freedom, in fact, is that the same freedom defended by Daniel Wagner. We have the feeling of acting. We feel acts as our own, but in truth, we have no control over them. Assuming for a moment that this account is true, we should say that this dimension is also irreducible and irreproducible. The difficulty arises, in fact, not in reference to having access to unconscious thoughts, which by their very definition cannot be accessed consciously, but to our sensation of will. 
which would be the results of an interpretation of such faults. The problem lies, firstly, in the fact that much less is known about this process today than is known about the human brain as a whole. Secondly, and this is the most remarkable fact, it lies in the fact that precisely this interpretation of the mechanism is in agential, in agential terms is inaccessible to us. And by virtue of this, it would constitute as an agent beings. In this regard, it was actually would suggest that there, there will always be a difference between humans and machines because we are conscious automatons. The problem, therefore, lies in the fact that in order to have a strong AI, and AI that is equal, if not superior to the human being, we would have to reproduce something that is not only inaccessible, but that, should it become accessible, would cause us to lose our very essence as a human being, as conscious being. If, therefore, it is possible to reproduce a modest or compatibilist freedom, it is equally possible to reproduce an indeterministic freedom. That is the freedom that critics of libertarianism claim is defended by radical and causal libertarians, a freedom that coincides with chains. In order to have a machine that acts according to chance, we don't even need to resort to those extraordinary artificers of computing that are known now as quantum computers. Today, in fact, even perfectly deterministic, AI such as uh, satellite navigators are programmed so that from time to time they can act stochastically, completely randomly, to find, for example, new roads for the route indicated by the user. True, some way say that the algorithm is programmed to act that way anyway, but in fact, its action will not be predictable as it's random. We might at best opt to describe this form of freedom and free necessity. Whether we have a deterministic or stochastic system However, we ultimate, ultimately do not have freedom, at least not in the sense I have defended in the preceding part of my presentation. To make this even clearer, um, let us look at the case of IBM's now famous computer, Deep Blue. Um, Cristiano, can I just yeah. give you a two-minute a two time warning? Okay, yeah, I'm finishing. Yeah. Okay. Um, no IBM uh, Deep Blue which in 1996 uh, defeated the, the world champion in, uh, in the game of chess. The computer emerged the winner of the game because thanks to its computing power, it made all the exact moves. Now, in performing this action, the computer was not free since it was determined to make those moves with a view to victory. Take the case above, let us imagine that the computer has been instructed to make one random move every 12 exact moves. Uh, will that 13 moves be free? Again, uh, the answer will be negative because deep blue behavior, however determined, will be guided by random criterion. A further scenario, however, while arises more perplexity. Will the computer be able every three, six, or seven moves to take a wrong move? Mind you, I am, I am no longer saying a random move, since a random move might turn out to be a right one, but a wrong one. Let me add a detail. Although it is particularly difficult for a computer to make a wrong move because of, say, a computational error or because it is faced with another, better performing computer, could the computer make a deliberately wrong move in the same way that an award-winning world champion would make a mistake because says he is tired 
and it is making a mistake in order for a young app and coming talent win? The answer is not simple. And I think that the question itself needs to be rephrased in the following terms and finishing. What kind of freedom is a responsibility in order to have AIs that are no more and more like human beings? In my humble opinion, none. And not because the skills of engineers are inadequate, and so it will only be a matter of passions, but because we simply do not, do not know what freedom is, and when we try to grasp it, it appears irreducible to our understanding. I remember the word of Professor Luca Gambardella, president for many years of Della Molle Institute in Switzerland, one of the uh, most important center about AI, that told me, tell me what something looks like and I will reproduce it, it for you. It will be a matter of time. Here is the real problem. We, in the face of freedom, do not know what we have to reproduce. Paolo Legrenzi and Carlo Arrigo on Umiltà, two neuroscientists, Italian neuroscientists, in criticizing the local, uh, localizationist principle in neuroscience, had already posed this dilemma. It is our condition, I quote, that first it is necessary to ask what we are localizing. This question, as researchers strive to build a strong AI that is a sentiment and free, should be rephrased as follows. What are we reproducing? What to reproduce, however, still remains after several centuries a mystery in the above sense, something that exceeds not only our knowledge, but also our own reality. Thanks for your attention.